Magandang gabi po sa mga kabayan at mga minamahal dyan po sa Pilipinas. Uh, we bring you warm greetings here from Rome, from the Pontificio Collegio Filipino. And I would like to thank our kabayan, uh, Archbishop uh, Rolly, for the kind invitation to be part of this recollection. To tell you the truth, my original outline was uh, a bit focused on the Archdiocese of Cáceres. Kaya lang po binalita sa akin na ito raw ay mukhang i, uh, ibabahagi sa iba pang uh, mga ibig manalangin at magnilay, which is a, a very kind act on the part of the Archdiocese of Cáceres. So maraming salamat po. Since this is a recollection, I would just offer a few points and would urge you to really pray. If there are helpful elements in the points that I will share, thanks be to God. If nothing in the recollection or in my points uh, inspired you or will inspire you, never mind. <laughs> the Lord can communicate with you uh, through the Bible and through your heart. The theme is a gifted to give mission today and beyond 500 years of Christianity. Wow, no po, uh, parang uh, kailangan natin ng isang taon para magnilay dito. We need one year to reflect on this. Uh, but this is not just a theme. Uh, given to us. I think it is a, a calling, and especially for the church in the Philippines, the call to take seriously our missionary vocation in Asia and now in other parts of the world. Well, tumanggap tayo ng biyaya, tayo ngayon ay inaanyayahan na ibahagi ang biyaya sa tinatawag na evangelization sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. I have here three points, po, three points for our meditation. The first is, the first part of the theme, gifted to give. Biniyayaan para magbigay, magbigay. Binigyan para makapagbigay. Wow, this part of the theme uh, is, is, is a reality, it is a calling, but you know, it could pose a temptation. Some of us could be tempted to be proud. Wow, I am a giver. <laughs> Kayo ngayon ang aasa sa akin. Ako ang magbibigay sa inyo. Maghintay kayo. I have the gifts that you need. I will come to you, I will give you. Now, let us reflect on that, gifted. The word gifted means that we have been given a gift or gifts. And the gift comes from somebody else. Galing yan sa iba. A gift is not self-produced. A gift is not self-made. When we talk of a gift, there is somebody else outside of me who, for many different reasons and hopefully out of graciousness, no, gave me this gift. In fact, even our capacity to give is God's gift to us. My dear brothers and sisters, I have a question on this part of the reflection. Do we still have this consciousness of gift, this consciousness of recognizing gifts from others, and the consciousness of receiving a gift? Is it still present in us? Nakikilala pa ba natin, nakinikilala natin na merong mga bagay na hindi tayo ang gumawa 
kundi ibinigay sa atin. Are we ashamed or even insulted to receive gifts? Are we tempted to feel insulted, to ask, to beg, to knock, and to receive? I am asking this because there seems to be a prevailing attitude in our world right now which says everything should be my achievement. Lahat ay dapat aking nakayanan. So we work hard in order to achieve. Our goal is success. And we rely only on ourselves. But a person who relies only on oneself slowly loses appreciation for gifts. But without the sense of gift and the humility to receive gifts, there will be no gratitude in life. We won't feel grateful to anyone. Imagine a world where there is no sense of gift. Just to ask you, uh, what did you eat this morning for breakfast? Well, I had here in the Colegio, I had rice, paksil da isda, and scrambled eggs. Oh, para naglalaway ako ah. <laughs> But, I did not plant the rice. I did not harvest the rice. I did not go out fishing. I did not raise the, the, the chicken <laughs> that produced the eggs. Everything that I ate this morning is a gift of God. A gift of creation, a gift of laborers. Imagine if I do not recognize gifts, I will say, oh, baka galing sa, sa maruming dagat yung isdang yan. Baka yung itlog na yan ay uh, dinagdagan ng kung ano-anong mga uh, binagong uh, uh, gene sa genome, whatever. I will not trust anymore. I will be suspicious. I will not appreciate. When we lose the sense of gift and the humility of receiving gift, we are not surprised anymore. Di ba yung gifts? Part of of, of of receiving and opening a gift is, wow, surprise. And that makes you uh, uh, joyful. But without surprise, there is no joy. We will not trust anyone. We will not pray to God. We will not need God. We will not need neighbors. The only thing that we will do is to work, work, work for success. I will work, work, work for self-fulfillment because I refuse to receive gifts. I can do it by myself. There is no room in my life for gifts. I am strong. Gifts are only for the weak and the low achievers. I can do it. But if life is like that, no sense of gift, even my work is directed only to self-fulfillment and to whom will I become accountable? To whom will I answer? If I know 
and I recognize the giver of a gift, I hopefully will use the gift according to the desire of the giver. I am accountable to the giver. But if I do not recognize gift and giver, to whom will I be accountable? To no one. I will just satisfy my own desires. In the end, I am accountable only to myself. I will not answer to anyone else, neither to God, neither to neighbor, neither to creation. I can do what I want. My dear brothers and sisters, I spent a bit of time on this because I always hear, gifted to give, gifted to give, gifted to give. Uh, but my question is, are we ready to receive gifts? And this painful question, have we already received the gift of faith? Self-achievement, proving one's worth rather than appreciating gift is not the true spirit of mission. The true spirit of mission comes from a humble, grateful, and joyful acceptance of a gift. Something that I did not produce and cannot produce. But I rejoice. I am humble before the gift. And my joy, my mission, is motivated not by a desire to prove my worth or to prove myself, but it is motivated by gratitude, the joy of sharing the gift. Let us turn to the apostles, our models in mission and evangelization. For example, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 6, Peter and John went to the temple and there was a crippled man who was begging. What did Peter say? He said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, walk. Now, Peter says, in the name of Jesus Christ, he recognizes that it is not his name, it is not the name of Simon Peter that has the authority, the power to effect a healing. It is Jesus who shared his power with his disciples. And that must be part of our mission and our pastoral life. Whatever authority we exercise, whatever responsibility we exercise, is the gift of the Lord. I cannot baptize huh, validly <laughs> on a Sunday or whatever day by saying, I baptize you in the name of Luis Antonio Tagle, uh, that's not a true baptism. No. I must recognize the gift of the grace that comes only from the Trinity. Another example, Acts 14, 8 to 18. St. Paul, no, uh, in Lystra, Again, was able to perform a healing ministry, uh, miracle in the name of Jesus. And the people who saw the miracle thought that he was a God. And they wanted to offer him sacrifices as though he was a God. Now, what did St. Paul say? 
He told the people, we are only men, human like you. We are bringing you the good news. We are not bringing ourselves. We are not here to be recognized by you. We are not here to be praised by you. And definitely we are not here to be worshipped by you. We are simple bringers of the good news of somebody else, Jesus Christ. Not only the church in the Philippines, but even the original apostles, they had the sense of gift. And the moment they lose that sense of gift, it is no longer mission. It is self-promotion. It is simply work in order to prove myself. This year and beyond, beyond the 500th anniversary, let us preserve the true sense of mission, the true sense of evangelization by avoiding pride, self-adulation, self-praise. Let us avoid the temptation to do things in order to be noticed, to be praised, like what we heard from Jesus in Matthew 6, that, uh, just uh, last Ash Wednesday, when you pray, when you give alms, when you fast, do not do all of these things for people to notice you, for people to praise you. No, that's not mission. Today and tomorrow, mission rests on the humility the humility to receive the gift. And the gift is not something. The gift is Jesus. Jesus himself. His gospel. His kingdom. Jesus is the Father's gift to us. Jesus was, even though he's the Son of God, Jesus was very much aware that he received everything from the Father. There's nothing that he said or did that he did not receive from the Father. And now, the gift that he has received from the Father, first, the Word of God, he gives to us. He says in Matthew 28, teach them to carry out everything I have commanded you. So my dear brothers and sisters, from today onwards, receive again the word of God, not our word. Let us not uh, uh, write a new, a, a, new, uh, a new gospel. The gospel is Jesus and his gift to us. And we teach as a gift what he has commanded us. Another thing, the sacraments, especially the Eucharist. In Matthew 26, verse 21, Jesus said, Take this, eat of this, this is my body. This is my blood, the blood of the covenant to be poured, poured out in behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. His body, his blood is his gift to us. And in the version of St. John, the Last Supper, he washed the feet of his disciples. That's a Eucharistic action, service of neighbor. And what did Jesus say? Do this in remembrance of me. You have received the gift, now do it, but not, not according to your terms, but do it in remembrance of me in memory of me. So receiving Jesus as, Jesus as a living memory. And then after the washing of the feet, he said, as I have done, so you should do. Okay, let us receive Jesus' washing of the feet, his service. And then we give it also as a gift to others. Charity, service, Jesus said, 
as the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Live on in my love. So even the love that we should give to others is a gift from Jesus. And this love he has received from the Father. So it's gift upon gift, grace upon grace, and even mission. Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. My dear brothers and sisters, crucial today and tomorrow is our ability, our humility to receive the gift, Jesus, his word, his presence, his Eucharist, his justice, his service, his charity. The question is, do we consider him as a gift? Is he a gift to us? I see a sister doing the sign language. Sister, am I talking too fast? Should I slow down so that you can catch up? Or is it okay? Okay? Okay. I go now to the second point. After looking at this important element of receiving the gift with Jesus. Now, our growth in humble mission. We said that receiving a gift requires humility. And sharing the gift should remain an act of humility. Uh, you know, when we go out of our homes, of our parishes, and especially those who have had experience of uh, going to places where Christians are a minority, you know, or countries that are not considered uh, predominantly Christian, like the Philippines, you no, know, we we are the third largest Christian country in the world in terms of numbers of Christians. You know? The third in the world and the largest uh, uh, Christian population in Asia. But when we go out, we see that some people who are not baptized, some who have not heard the gospel, some of them live out the qualities that the Lord expects of his disciples. Because of my work with Caritas and also with the, uh, with the present congregation the, for evangelization of peoples, I have visited what we call young churches or mission territories. I've been to a district in Nepal, in Nepal, where not a single Christian uh, is found. Not a single Christian in that area. But they were so good. <laughs> they were so loving. They were respectful. They embraced us like we were kings and queens. You find in some places that are labeled as non-Christian, people who are just, people who are righteous, people who think of others, people who are honest, people who admit their faults. And whereas in so-called Christian countries, including our own beloved Philippines, we see attitudes, behaviors, structures, systems, 
ways of doing things that are counter witness to the gospel. We see corruption. We see infidelities. We see abortion. And in some so-called Christian countries, we see an open attack on Christian teaching. They would rather side with new ways of thinking and philosophies, etc., you know, and ridicule Christian teaching. This is a reality. This is a reality. And I guess it is part of the gift. The gift, as St. Paul says, we are earthen vessels. And this brokenness that we have, this fragility that we have, is to make us aware that the power, the gift does not come from us. Part of our missionary engagement is to encounter people who will make us realize that we need continuing evangelization. No missioner, no gifted missioner should ever claim I am already a Christian. I am already evangelized. There is nothing more that I could receive because I am already a full, perfect Christian. Anyone who says that does not live in the truth. We should admit that there is always an unbeliever there is always a sinner in each one of us. In each one of us, there is always a spot that needs to be evangelized over and over again. We need to receive the gift over and over again. And part of God's ways of making us humble and dynamic in receiving ourselves and evangelization, to be open to be evangelized, is the mysterious witness that the non-believers could give to us. But this is not surprising. Hindi na, hindi na po ito bago. Even Jesus, during his time, look, Jesus praised many outsiders, those who did not belong to the faith of the Jewish people. No? Uh, he praised this uh, uh, Syrophoenician woman for her faith. Uh, Jesus conversed with a Samaritan woman. Uh, Jesus praised a, 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 a centurion. These were people who were considered outsiders or even pagan. But Jesus saw true faith in them. The faith that he did not see in the temple officials in the scribes, in the Pharisees. Jesus is teaching us in our evangelize, evangelizing mission, our eyes must be open to the ways by which God continues to evangelize us. By saying this, then we realize mission, evangelization, is not a proud imposition on others. No. Hindi tayo dapat nagpapanggap. 
na po. Ako ang pinakabanal, ako ang nasa katotohanan, kayong lahat makasalanan, kayong lahat nasa kadiliman, eto. Mm. Mm. Tanggapin ninyo ito. Pag hindi ninyo tinanggap, mananatili kayo sa dilim, mananatili kayo sa kasalanan. Enforcing, forcing the gift, I mean, <laughs> is destroying the gift. And that's what we call proselytism. No? Mission is not judging others while pretending to be perfect. Humble mission is the joyful and grateful conviction that Jesus, the gift of the Father, must be shared, must be shared, needs to be shared. He is the good news. No? Uh, and I need to see the good news which the Holy Spirit shares with me even through surprising agents. Hindi tayo magmimisyon para mamilip. Magmimisyon tayo para ibahagi ang mabuting balita. We go on mission not to force people, not to coerce, not to bend their wills. That is violence. We engage in mission simply because we have good news. And out of love, we want to share the good news. Diba, every good news deserves to be shared. Nakapasa yung anak ninyo no? sa, sa college, gagraduate na. Uh, pagkatapos ng labing limang taon, wow, finally, makakataga, graduate na, good news. Siguro hindi kayo makapigil. Lahat na ng kamag-anak, lahat na ng kaibigan, tatawagan ninyo no? to share the good news. Ganun naman ang good news. Good news that is shared is bad news. Unfortunately, we easily share bad news. We easily share fake news. Anong tawag dyan? Chismis. Paninira. Hindi po yan ang misyon. Hindi yan ang evangelization. And the motive is not to force anyone but just to share. And if they reach faith in the Lord, that is God's gift. It is not a product of my achievement. I should not say, I was the one who made a Christian out of that person. No, no. It is a gift of God, his or her faith. That's not my success story. Like St. Paul, in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23, he just said, I made myself the slave of all. No? To the Jew, I became a Jew. To uh, the Greek, I became Greek. Why? So that the good news could be shared in the hope that some of them would be saved. But who will save them? The Lord, Jesus Christ, not St. Paul. In Philippians chapter 1, 15 uh, and following, even up to uh, uh, verse 18, you know, uh, the enemies of St. Paul were preaching Christ but the Christ, which is, uh, I mean, their approach is quite different from St. Paul's approach. Uh, but St. Paul says, all that matters is that Christ is being proclaimed. That is what brings me joy. Even if my enemy preaches Christ, okay, as long as Christ is preached, that is my joy. He does not say, Abba. 
Parang ang nag, nag-evangelize sa kanila itong grupong ito ah, hindi ako ah. Eh, kang ah, masama yan ah. Dapat kami na Dapat ako. The credit comes to me. No, that's not mission. That's ambition. No? For St. Paul, even his enemies could be proclaimers of the gospel. And for him, as long as Jesus is preached, he is happy. So our role is to continuously receive Jesus, be transformed by Jesus. We need to be evangelized. We need to receive the gift over and over again. And our mission is to share the gift through a credible witness of life, through service and charity, and when needed, with words. We need those words. Now, but nowadays, nowadays, it is by the living word, by a credible and consistent way of life. And in some parts of the world, where saying the word is even illegal, no? Do not stop sharing the word. Share it through your actions. Share it with your love. Share it through the surprise that your service uh, renders to you. No? I remember when I visited a refugee camp in, uh, in Lebanon. No? Uh, and they were all non-Christians in the re- refugee camp. When we arrived, the head of the refugee camp, he, he looked like the, the patriarch you know, of the group, approached me and asked, you are not one of us. You, you are not of this Islamic faith or religion. But why? Why do, you, why do you care for us? Why do you feed us? Why do you show us love and concern? Why? And I thought he was opening the door for me to proclaim the gift that we have received. I told him, our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ, told us to love everyone, everyone. And uh, he gave me the opportunity to evangelize. He looked at us and wanted to know the secret of our joy, of our love. We did not have to force the gift. No. He asked for the gift. And then we shared the gift. But I tell you, I learned a lot from him too. In a way, he was used by the Holy Spirit, you know, to uh, show me what true caring means. We need to be evangelized over and over again. The bishops of Asia said that evangelization in Asia, where we are a minority, should be done through a dialogue of life. We proclaim Jesus in the form of dialogue. We do not proclaim with pride or proselytism, we proclaim in the mode of humble dialogue of life. And we hope that today, up to uh, the, the second coming of Christ, we Filipinos would be humble in continuing uh, need for evangelization, the need for continuing evangelization, the openness to be evangelized, no? and also to learn how to dialogue. Mga kapatid, alagay ko, meron man sa inyo dyan, mga nasa Catholic schools, no po? Uh, kasi kung minsan, sa mga Catholic schools, meron tayo mga debate clubs. No? Tinuturuan natin sila mag-debate 
Meron ba tayo mga dialogue clubs? Eh, baka mamaya eh, we are always talking about sending people to mission, sending people to evangelization. Pero ang napapadala natin, debaters rather than dialogue partners. And uh, it is, uh, when we say we defend our faith, it doesn't mean we have to be uh, cruel. No? That we need to be like the people who are hurting us. No? In the Sabi nga ni Jesus, we are sending you as uh, lambs or doves in the midst of wolves. Na, hindi tayo pinapadala bilang wolves. So uh, let us learn that. Now I go to my third and last point. Na po. Third and last point. Uh, from, I think, since Vatican II, 19, the late 1960s, the, the different popes from St. Paul VI no, up to uh, today, Pope Francis, they have been reminding the church in the Philippines of our missionary vocation in Asia and the rest of the world. We have been gifted with the gospel, now share the gospel in a dialogue of life, in a dialogue of life, in continuing conversion, but sharing the gift. Now, some people might say, why will we send missionaries, priests, religious, or even lay missionaries? We also have our needs here. Eh, di ba? Sabi, charity begins at home. Eh, why will we uh, uh, think of others? Eh, dito nga, sa home. Ang dami na nating needs. Nadapi nating needs. And uh, the response that I always hear is, yes, charity begins at home, but it should not end at home. And besides, besides, we're talking of mission. Sharing the good news. Sharing the gift. And the desire to share gifts to others is not blocked by one's needs. If we wait for the time when all of our needs have been met before we share with others, that time will not come. Sabi nung iba, o oh, sige magbabahagi ako, pero pagka yung pangangailangan ko ay tapos na. Unahin ko muna yung pangangailangan ko. Eh pero ang tanong, kailan mauubos yung pangangailangan natin? Hindi yan mauubos. Kaya, pag yan ang prinsipyo natin na I will wait for all my needs to be met first before I attend to the needs of others, that is another way of saying I will not go on mission, I will not share the gift. Sharing even in our poverty. That's mission. Sharing even in our need. That's mission. Mission should not be done only by those who have an abundance. And then they send missioners excess. Hindi mission yun. Na? Ang mission, kahit, kahit wala kayong excess, walang sobra, kahit kulang na kulang, because the gift must be shared, we share. And our model is Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter 2, He freely, lovingly emptied himself of his glory in order to become a simple human being, to be one of us, 
becoming poor. St. Paul in the second letter to the Corinthians chapter 8, he says that Jesus, though he was rich, became poor so that we may become rich in his poverty. And so it is this dynamics, you know? If you want to give a gift, be ready to be poorer. Huh? But that is not your, your, you don't calculate. You don't calculate. You just want to share the gift. This is the practice of the early church. In Acts 2, 42 to 47. And Acts 4, 32 to 35. The Christian community shared their gifts with one another. Such that there was no one in need among them. In 1 Corinthians 16, 1 to 4, and in 2 Corinthians 8, 1 and following, we find St. Paul begging the Christians in Corinth, in Macedonia and everywhere to take up a collection to help the church in Jerusalem. Now, St. Paul praised these churches because he knew they were also poor. They were also in need. But the calling of love, the calling of brothers and sisters makes us share, makes us compassionate and less calculating. Now, I am very happy to see here in Rome, when I left the Philippines, you now some people were saying, oh, uh, uh, you have a new mission. Okay, thank you. <laughs> some say, oh, you are being promoted. I say, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Bakit promotion ang iniisip? Ano? I said, in one event, I said, uh, now, I will be an overseas Filipino worker. And I tell you, in many parts of the world, especially those being served by the propaganda feed, the greatest missioners of the Philippine church, you know, maybe unplanned, <laughs> maybe unexpectedly, you no, know, our great missioners, our gifts, are our overseas Filipino workers. They left our country, they left families with much pain, with, with much uh, sorrow. And that does not disappear even when they have reached already their country of destination. But they leave in order to find a, a job so that they could support their families back home. But you know, in God's hand, in God's mighty hand, in God's gracious hand, this search for job has become a missionary movement. In many parts of the world, especially in parts of the world where Christians are a minority, Churches are, are being filled up by Filipino migrants. They are our great missioners. And we hope that today and in the future, we will form, form missioners. The pandemic, the pandemic no, the COVID-19 pandemic has caught us by surprise. And we realized that we really need to form people to become missioners when restrictions happen. Like the families. The families need to be formed as transmitters of the faith among themselves. Parents, you know, 
we thank our catechists. Unfortunately, because there are some catechists already, you know, uh, some parents say, uh, I will not teach catechism anymore to my children. Tadadala ko na lang sa parokya. May katechista naman dun eh. At ngayon, na lockdown, <laughs> may restrictions. Hindi pwede pumunta sa klase yung mga bata. Sino ngayon ang misyonero? Dapat yung magulang. Okay. Huh? And hopefully, parents who are trained in the homes to be catechists, if in the future they become OFWs or they 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 migrate no uh, to other places they already are trained to transmit the faith our BECs our small Christian communities that should be also a place like a school of missionary engagement begin in your locality magsama-sama kayo Reflection on the Word of God, gift of God, the Word of God, prayer, gift of God, and then reflect. Ano ang nangyayari sa, sa bakura ninyo? Ano ang nangyayari sa inyong barangay? And what does the Word of God tell you? That is already a missionary evangelizing preparation. No? Uh, and then, magkainan kayo. <laughs> Magmirienda kayo. Sharing, joy, E para hindi lahat mukhang uh, mukhang uh, aburido hindi lahat mukhang uh, uh, ano tawag doon uh, parang uh, inaatake ng kung anong maligno na we are bearers of good news yan our doctors our nurses we hope we could make them not only and we appreciate their medical uh, her heroism at this time but we I think could train them to be missionaries of God's compassion. No? Na, may nakita akong picture uh, uh, dito na isang health worker. No? Kasi merong isang bata na with Down syndrome na hirap na hirap huminga may COVID no? e, in isolation sa hospital. Malayo ang magulang. Naku, yung health worker, he embraced the child as his own. At tinutulungan niya huminga. And you see that this is not just function. It is not just work. It is an evangelizing moment. But do we offer this evangelizing formation to doctors, nurses, our teachers, our schools? How about our politicians? How about our artists, our actors, actresses, the young people look up to them. Can we train our actors and actresses to be missionaries of the good news, of justice, of fairness, of love and service? So that when young people look up to them, they see a living gospel. The world of sports, the military, the police, the business sector, now that everyone is experiencing some financial uh, difficulties, could we make the economy more of sharing of gift rather than working for profit alone? the social teachings of the church, that the goods of the earth must be shared with everyone. And the refugees who are inviting us to journey with them today and beyond 500 years, we should be open to what the Lord sends us. But today, whatever your state of life may be, receive the gift and prepare yourself to be an evangelizer. Wherever you are in your life, in your career, be 
a recipient of the gift, who is Jesus, and with joy share that gift. Let me end here. This is a really a historic moment for us. As we give thanks to the Lord, let us be filled with humility and let us continue receiving the gift. We do not produce the faith. We must receive it so that we have something to share with others for no other reason than the joy, the, sh the sharing of the joy that we have experienced in Jesus so that Jesus' joy may be full and so that the world may share in the justice, the love, the truth, and the peace that he wants us to possess. Thank you very much to everyone. Marami marami salamat po. Please continue reflecting on this. Thank you, Your Eminence, for the powerful and encouraging reminder that because we are so blessed and gifted with so much, we can share, we can give, and we can continue on the mission here in the Philippines and beyond our borders. And now, let us listen to the message of our beloved Archbishop of Cáceres, His Grace, Most Reverend Rolando J. Tria Tirona, OCD DD. Well, it is very obvious that my message is a message of gratitude. Pasasalamat, Krat Sibile, Eminenza, my dear Kabaya. So nice to see you. Huh? Wow. Natanggap po ba yung pinadala wow. kong pili? Salamat. At saka yung essence. Salamat. No. <laughs> Baging nasa bulsa. Actually, your eminence, uh, there are more than 4,000 who are watching us now. Not just in Cáceres, but in so many dioceses. No? And as, us as usual, every time you share with us, it's always a sharing of inspiration to our spirits. It is always a ref refreshment, refreshing our minds, and especially very encouraging for us. And salamat din sa mga the different challenges you um, gave us to us, no? And if I may just say, tama po kayo, Eminenza, dahil sa Pilipinas, yung concept natin ng gift, madalas lang yan, pag birthday ko, Christmas, Valentine. Sa labas po noon, hindi po gift. Ngayon ang tawag, ayuda. <laughs> ayuda ngayon. No? So thank you for challenging us to reawaken that sense of give, being gifted by God. No? And salamat then for challenging us to continue growing Na wag tayo, so to say, uh, bask in our laurels, so to say, but we should continue in humility. Gusto gusto ko yon. In everything, humility, you know. Na patulit tayo, tayo rin mismo mga evangelize. And of course, yung challenge na we should never tire and be afraid and be slow in sharing, no? So maraming maraming salamat po, Eminenza, your Eminence, for your wonderful sharing. I'm sure so many are happy, so many are awakened, and so many are encouraged and challenged. No? Uh, sangalam po ng Office of the Missions, sangalam po ng Archdiocese of Cáceres. So we thank you so much, grazie mille. And we can only say, we will pray that God may bless you in the manner he knows best. Mabuhay po kayo. Bon pomeridyo. Salamat po. God bless you. Salamat po. Palakpakan naman natin ang ating eminence. Thank you. Just text me anytime I can send more pili. Sigurado yan. Sayang. Gusto ko magpadala ng laing. Hindi tinanggap ng LBC. <laughs> Bawal yata ngayon eh. Bawal. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Regards, regards, regards. Tone. Regards. And all your community there. And Father Andrew is with us here. Yes, yes. Yeah. 
Thank you, Eminence. God bless you for the blessing. Thank you. God bless uh, Archbishop. Thank you very much, Archbishop. And for the final blessing, may we call on Cardinal Tagle again, please. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Before we go... Salamat po. 